You're going to be successful in business. You have to be willing to hire people that are smarter than you. You can't do it yourself. You have to have people that you trust. Everybody is as important as the next person. You have to take risks. Every business should be prepared to be sold in five years. Business Newsmakers is brought to you by Tompkins Mayapack Bank, your local, mobile, and remarkable community bank. Hello and welcome to Hudson Valley News Network's Business Newsmakers Show, brought to you by Tompkins Mayapack Bank. I'm Philomena Finelli of Impact PR and Communications, and I'm here to help you get all up in the business of the wow-worthy leaders and community change makers from the Hudson Valley. Today, we're privileged to be joined by Judith Papo, president of Legal Shred. Judith, thank you for heading into the studio this morning. Thanks for having me. So, Judith, about a little over 10 years ago, you had this idea to start a business. Can you walk me through how you knew that was an idea? So my husband owned a pharmacy. He opened up his pharmacy in 2004, and he was getting busier, which was great. And at the time, I was also, I was working in a CPA firm, and he was getting backed up with a shredding. He said, so who do you use? And he, and he called the company and said, that's no good. Like, I don't feel like they're... They're not, they're not going to help me with my HIPAA compliance. I, I don't really feel comfortable with them. And so, you know, that, that kind of started to, the wheels turning for him. And at the same time, my father-in-law had just retired from the Carpenters Union and was spending a little bit too much time just hanging out at the pharmacy and, you know, watching too much uh, TV. And so my, my, my husband felt like, oh, you know, maybe there's something that I can do that would get my my wife out of tax season and my father-in-law out of my pharmacy. So, uh, you know, he, he thought, well, maybe we can do a shredding company. So, so there, there was nothing that existed in the area that Not that we could find. Because we're really, that the pharmacy is all about being the, the, the family pharmacy, the, the community pharmacy. And, and that was also something that he wanted me to, to be able to feel myself, to, to have to be part of something that was really part of the community, like he had found with the pharmacy. So uh, we, did, we did a lot of research. Uh, the, the companies that sell these, these trucks, these massive trucks, are very eager to sh show you the experience. They, they flew us to uh, North Carolina, and then we took our own trip out to Colorado, where we spent time with family businesses that had trucks and they took us out and we got to spend time really understanding the the parts of the business and then the 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 aspect of working the trucks and and it just seemed like a good fit my father-in-law I mean what man doesn't want a truck <laughs> and uh, and for me I had the experience with I had you know the English background I was an English teacher and then I had the CPA so I could do the business and I could do the the the, out, the outreach and the networking and my father-in-law could run the truck cuz you know I really don't know much about trucks and it was about the relationships that we we knew we had one client we knew the pharmacy needed a shredding company and then we just really felt in our hearts that we knew that this is about think local first. We, we've lived in this community our whole lives and we knew that we weren't the only ones that really wanted to have a company that could relate and make us feel really comfortable about our compliance, about the security, and about using someone that, that we run into at the supermarket and at the gym and you know, just around town. So that was, that was the foundation of it. So you knew you had one customer. We did. You did your due diligence. You saw other businesses that were like the one you were going to open. What other resources did you tap in order to know you were getting off on the right foot with this idea you had? Anyone starting a business, if you don't sit down with, the, with someone from SCORE, you're not taking advantage of what's out there. It costs nothing. And these are people who have a lot of experience in the business community. And, and the website also, now the website has really built up. The website has you know, great spreadsheets, you know, P&Ls and, and forecasting and, you know, just really a great way to just really explore whether you have a good idea. Do you recommend just going online and DIY or if somebody's I, watching well, out I mean, there? That's a good place to start because 
those are those are some of the they'll they'll start asking you some of the basic questions, but then make an appointment. I I find that the it's about the connections, it's about the the, the meeting people. That's what drives me. First, you got to find out if if there are people out there that are interested in your business, and the only way to do that is to talk to people. I'm always reading. I like to. I'm curious. I I, I want to learn, and I, I want to learn about people, and that's. That's, you know, that's, that's what drives me. You mentioned reading. What are, what are some of the books that you feel have been valuable to you as a business owner that you'd recommend to others? Well, I love Jim Collins, of course, Good to Great, Built to Last. Uh, I really, I, I like, you know, just in terms of getting to know people, that Susan Cain book, Quiet, you know, it helped me get to know myself, too. And when you started off, you were under the name HV Shred, but now you're Legal Shred. How did that come about? We, we wanted to own the Hudson Valley and that was our goal and, and we felt like that's where we know people and that's where we've, we've grown our network. Um, but, you know, my father-in-law retired and uh, Ryan Fole is actually someone who says, I have a friend, he's doing this in Long Island. So I call him up and, and he's like, I'm here for you. I didn't even know this guy. He just knew that we both were friends. Like a mentor relationship, relationship, basically? Uh, no, it was really, it was just a friendship. And it was someone who was, I knew was always going to take my, my call and, and could, could help me out with whatever was happening with my trucks or strange things that might, a customer might ask me to do. Like, what do you do about that? And so I, and he, the, and the, our first conversation he invited me to come to his office, and, and uh, so I went down there. And So he was the person you called so for So when advice. I needed to know how to value the 50% the that my father-in-law owned, I called Sean. And then, you know, somewhere in that conversation, he said, you know, would you, would you be interested in, in us, you know, in, in me buying your half? Were you surprised? I was so I was so thankful. I was so grateful. I because to me, I didn't know why anyone who had just sold would want to get in again. You know, it's like he's always so calm. I get very excited about you know things that are happening, and he's so relaxed. And so I, he's I your was, compliment, not your duplicate. Yeah, exactly. In so many of the same ways that my husband is. And okay, having so a partner has allowed you to focus on the parts of the business you exactly. love the most. So correct. He the paperwork just tires me out. Whereas meeting people customer service, customer relations, you know, uh, trying to decide you know, where, where we might be able to grow our business more. That stuff energizes me, whereas payroll and sales tax and the, even, even our taxes are all, I do, I do some of the bookkeeping because it's just natural to, to, to te do some of that stuff. And I am a CPA, so I, you know, it's not like I don't know how to do this stuff. A lot of my, my clients are CPAs because of the, the relationship. So we, you know, we had the pharmacy, but then, you know, I had a lot of connections through the, the CPA society and I'm still active in the CPA society. So I said, I'm going, I'm not doing stuff in December. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do something around March 15th because that's when you need that pick me up. I, and then I met Heather through BNI, Heather Heather Casto with the Chocolate Moose, and and then we would just start to brainstorm. It's like how how can we make this fun too? And and so, so you wanted something, something to get, get really personal with, with your customers, customers and to thank them, yeah, and, and to make them feel like they, and to something that would inject a little bit of fun, and then also make them know that I feel them. You know, like we're family. I get it. So we have, this year, we had ladybugs in there, uh, chocolate ladybugs, so that's good luck. And then we had flower cookies, uh, you know, it's about spring and growth and renewal. And we also, every year, I try to put in something fun. So I put in silly putty this year because, you know, it's, it, to me, that's a lot of different things. We, we mold ourselves, we customize our service to whatever people need, and then we also like to think of ourselves as kind of classic, like Silly Putty, it's classic. And, and we're old fashioned, we're, we're about the service, we're about the, 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 the relationship. And there, there is something special about making it more than just about the transaction, about making it about the relationship with the customer. And yeah, so you've done a great creative. job of that. And in ways that you wouldn't, I would not have imagined, like, yeah, I own a shredding company and we provide security and, doc and compliance. 
but there's so many ways to be creative. Well, I'm grateful to you for coming in today and sharing how every person is a customer and how you can bring a little bit of joy to anyone's world through your business. So I want to encourage you, Judith, to keep on trucking. And I want to thank you for heading into Business Newsmakers today. And thank you to all of you for joining us. And I hope you continue to tune in each week to hear from more leaders in our community. Thank you so much. Now it's time for this week's Tompkins Tip with Amy Greiner, Vice President of Business Development. If you have a 401k with a former employer, deciding on what to do with it when you've moved on can be challenging. To help you decide what's best, consider these three options. Keep your account in your previous employer's 401k plan to maintain investments that are low cost or have limited availability outside of the plan. Take advantage of creditor protections that are unique to qualified retirement plans. Retain the ability to borrow from it if the plan allows for such loans to ex-employees. When an option, transfer to your new employer's 401k plan to have the convenience of consolidating assets, retain the firm's strong creditor protections, and keep them accessible via the plan's loan feature. Also, maximize on more competitive investment menu. Roll over 401k assets to a traditional IRA or individual retirement account to optimize on a wider array of investment choices than what exists in your new 401k plan. Take advantage of programs that don't impede creditor protections or the loss of access to these funds via a 401k loan feature. By taking the time to understand your options, deciding what to do with your 401k can be a confident step instead of a confusing one. Business Newsmakers is brought to you by Tompkins Mayapack Bank, your local, mobile, and remarkable community bank.